Welcome to From Scratch Ranch in this three-part video series on building our concrete pier foundation for our Woodmiser LX25 sawmill. If you've been following our channel for a while, you may have seen us using this sawmill over in the shop side of our barn dominium, which is way over there, cutting up on some small red cedar trees, uh, creating some charcuterie boards and wine flights, coat racks, hat hooks, our custom vent hood. Uh, check out those videos. Uh, there's links down below in the description. They turned out pretty good. Um, but it was creating a lot of dust in the shop and uh, taking up a lot of room. And it was never intended to be there permanently. We always wanted to put it out here. We finally got that done. So the first video is all about the planning and the layout of all of the holes and then digging all of those holes. The second video is pouring concrete and installing all of the brackets. And then the third and final video, we are going to construct the wood framing, bring the sawmill out here, reassemble it out here, and then talk about cost. What did it cost me to build this foundation for the sawmill. So stay tuned. The first thing I need to do is figure out the general position of where I want the sawmill to be at. And I've picked out this location here. I've done it in previous videos where I've cleared out all of these uh, underbrush on the tree line here and just the general position of where I want the sawmill in comparison to where the barnuminium is way over there. Um, you know, the house will be back this way. Uh, the barn, our horse barn, will be built up on top of the hill here, you know, and then our main pasture area, you know, and the tree line all along there. So as you can see, I've cleared out this entire area where I want to put my sawmill and the sawmill shed eventually um, right here between these two big trees. I've got this big oak tree here and a hickory right over here. So I want to position right between those trees. I also want enough room to where I can pull my tractor around behind the shed um, where the sawmill will be at, so behind the sawmill. So that way, all the sawdust that will collect behind the sawmill over there, I can bring the tractor in and scoop it out of there. And then right here where we're gonna put the sawmill, this is actually down a hill. Um, it, there's a slight slope here, which is probably really difficult to see you know, on the camera here, but this slopes down um, just gently. And that, that'll be great for like rolling logs. You know, I'll bring them over the tractor, my log piles over here, um, and I'll be able to pick them up and bring them close enough. And if I need to roll them on, I can just get some ramps and roll them down this hill right onto those ramps and onto the, to the bunk of the sawmill. Or I can just bring the tractor right in and just drop them right on the sawmill a little bit easier. So the very first thing I did is I just ran a couple tape measures, 20 feet in length, 37 and a half inches apart. So now that I got my general layout of where I want the sawmill to be, I've got to run my string lines now on exact measurements of where each pier will be. I'm doing concrete piers on this with the Sano tubes. Uh, it might be a little bit overkill, but you know what? I don't want this thing shaking and moving or adjusting in any type of way. It needs to be perfectly still um, and put those heavy logs on. So I'm doing concrete piers on this. All right, well, I'm heading out here in the dark, out towards the sawmill spot where I'm putting in the piers to put my sawmill in. But it's dark out now. I had to wait till nighttime because I need to find level for my piers. And I don't have a rotary laser level. So I got a 20 foot span I'm trying to find level for. And I do have um, this cobalt, you know, laser level, but it's not a rotary laser level with a detector or anything like that. So I can do it indoors just fine. But this thing doesn't work at all, you know, outdoors in daylight and sunshine. Can't really see it much past like five feet. So since I have to span 20 feet, I can either go to the store and buy six seven hundred dollar piece of equipment a rotary laser level and detector and and uh grade rod and all that to find out my level on that side over there or i can just come out here after dark 
and turn this on and find my level with my laser. Let's see if this works. Let me turn this off and turn this on. Wow. Yes, this works at nighttime. Okay, I know you probably can't see this very well. But what I did is I lined the, I set the laser level on a block here on this block and I raised it up so that the laser line is right on the top of that uh, board there that I'm using as my level on this side. So this laser is coming across all the way here and hitting the top of this board. You can see it there. And then shooting across over there. So I can see that it's hitting the board here, but not on these other ones. I got these over here, which tells me that this board is tall enough, this stake here, but these are not. I'm way short. So I need to put in longer, taller boards here. But what I'm gonna do is, since I've got the laser line at marked here, I'm just gonna take my Sharpie and I'm gonna draw my line right at that laser line there. And now at least I've got a line of reference from 20 feet away when using the laser. And then I can go reset these tomorrow with taller stakes and use that as my reference point for level. So I don't need to wait a whole nother night <laughs> and bring more stakes out here and stake them in and do it again tomorrow. But that's pretty awesome. And look at this. That's awesome. This vertical and the horizontal plane being lit up by this green laser level in the woods. That's an amazing effect. Huh. It's like a just a plane. It's like slicing through my woods. And on the horizontal too here, look. That's awesome. Okay, well we got that set. Now tomorrow, we'll finish this out. Well, it's the next day and here's my line I drew last night using my laser level at night. This is a line laser level. And I was able to see it at night and I drew that line right there. So now I just need to replace these shorter stakes because the laser didn't hit them all because they were too short with these longer ones. And then redraw my line or draw my line on this one. If I can find level now from that first one as my reference point. Now I can just set my level up. Right there. Okay, now I've got my level spot for this board here. Okay, got my board on the side, now let's do the other one. So now, since it's on the bottom, I gotta mark the bottom. That's actually where I want. Okay, double check across. Good. Okay, I got all my batter boards installed ready to go to run that string line all the way around the perimeter to the exact precise measurements for this sawmill. And then the height is determined by uh, these batter boards. I leveled these out at the height. I want those rails to sit on those piers. So when I install all of those sono tubes in the ground, they're gonna be set to that string height and I should have a nice level uh, set of piers to install the sawmill on.
Okay, I need to get precise measurements of the location of these piers and the position of the brackets within those piers. I'm using these concrete forms here. They're eight inch, you know, like sono tubes or, you know, building forms here. This is the quick tube. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just kind of dry fitting this on to get general position. I'm visual <laughs> and I want to just see it work. And so I'm positioning the, the brackets and the tubes just measure from end to end. So I know that my brackets, I need to be 37 and a half inches on my brackets from outer edge to outer edge. And the concrete piers can be off just a little bit. It's the brackets that have to be exact. I need to measure from 37, from that line there, 37 and a half inches that way. There's gonna be my outside edge of that bracket, the other outside edge over there. But I, I need, in order to get the right measurement, I need to actually find square, at least close enough to measure over there what I need to do. So I'm putting my straight edge up against this and just kind of eyeballing it. But I'm gonna use my drywall T here and just kind of make sure that this is really close by sliding this over and adjusting. And yep, see, I'm hitting the string, so I don't want to hit the string. I want to be right on the edge of that string. There we go. So that's really close to, to square. I'm making sure that I'm flush here with my straight edge on the inside rail there. This post is in the way for me to do on the outside edge, but that's really, really close. I'm gonna, you know, do the um, diagonals, measure the diagonals to make sure I'm exact. But this is, this will get me close enough now where I make my mark over here. Like so. And actually it's back, back side. So that's gonna be my square line to that corner there. So now I can measure my 37 and a half inches from that nail there. And I'm a little long, so I need to come in square here now. I actually need to put my string way back over here. Um, but this is my square line. So what I need to do is just use my speed square and kind of project that line back at 37 and a half inches. I'm keeping my tape measure on the line I drew, putting my speed square at 37 and a half and then use my marker back here to draw my line. So that would be 37 and a half inches parallel to that line there. And that I'll put my nail here and my string will go right along that 37 and a half inches right there and be square, hopefully close enough. Okay, before I string my line from there to here, I'm gonna do the same thing on this end. I'm on the opposite end now. I'm gonna find square here, my 37 and a half inches using the same method. Yeah, see I just randomly put that on thinking that's square because of the how the batter boards are, but that's way off, right? So I need to really shift that over. This isn't very scientific. <laughs> this is more of an eyeball method. But like I said, I'm gonna check my diagonals anyway. Okay, I think that's really close. So it's on the back side here. So I wanna mark the back side over here. All right, I'm gonna measure my 37 and a half inches from that nail there. Short again, so using my speed square. Getting on that 37 and a half. Okay, now let's run our string line. Slip knot, so then I can tighten it. Nice and tight. Okay, so now I laid my straight edge down across this is going to be the back side. The edge of the sono tube is going to be right in here like that. I want it to end there. So just to make sure I'm square before I run my string, 
I'll just adjust this to kind of visualize this to get really close as I can to square. I think that's good. Now, I don't have to be perfect, perfectly square here because these holes are in a, you know, just parallel lines. I'm not actually building a square structure, a rectangular structure here. They're just the piers that need to go in and, you know, it's a, it's a nine inch auger that I'm gonna put into the ground and, and punch those holes into the ground. They just have to be really, really close. It doesn't have to be perfect. The perfect has to be in the parallel lines that uh, my rails and those brackets are dead on all the way down and all the way down. So if these are just offset just a little bit, it's not that big of a deal as long as these lines are completely parallel. Ah, look who's coming. Remy and Michaela. You coming to help? All right, I got an extra set of hands. Let me run this line. Okay. So I put a nail on that batter board there. Okay. See it? Yep. So it's gonna be the line that goes that way. So hook that on there and then I'll tie it off on this one. So the, the string should be touching the other horizontal lines. Good, so we got a good grid there. That looks square, huh? Yeah. 19, five and one sixteenth is right there. Okay, let's do it on the other side now. Okay, what's the... Just four even? One foot four inches. One foot four inches. So I need to go 19 four. Okay. So now we need to measure our diagonals. So 18 three and three quarters. Okay, so now let's do the other side. And this one should come out to be the same. 18 three and three quarters after I subtract. So we're good, both sides. 18 three and three quarters. We're square. Good. So now we're gonna get the first one pinned to the ground at the right spot. So now we're gonna go every six feet. Okay, so we'll come six feet right here. And then I need you to put the level down. Make sure I'm plumb. So right at six feet, so over this way a little bit. So right here. 12. It's important that it's plumb, so I'm getting the right measurement from the bottom. So now I can measure my one and three quarters. If you weren't plumb and, and your the level was out that way a little bit, and I measured off that, then my dot would be over there, and I wouldn't be perfectly straight line. Okay, and then 18. Okay, I think that's it for tonight. Now I go hook up the auger to the tractor. anything? I don't think so. I mean, we can start drilling holes tonight. It's still daylight. I'm gonna use the rock buster to see if I can.
All right, I had a hell of a time digging all of these holes, even with that auger on the back of the tractor. It sucked. It didn't do a damn thing. I basically dug all of these holes by hand using my rock buster and the post hole digger over there. It was rough. It was really rough. I finally realized when I found one of the teeth off the bottom of the auger there, just laying in one of the piles of dirt and I saw it and I'm like, what's that? And I realized that I wore that auger down all the way to where the teeth were falling off. And then the tip was so worn down, it wasn't doing anything. It was completely ineffective. And it's my fault. I made a big mistake. I did not read up or do any research on how to actually use the auger properly. And more importantly, how to maintain it. That it, once those teeth wear down to a certain point, you have to replace them. The tip also at the very bottom, that has to be replaced. If it's not doing any good anymore, it's so worn down. And because we have such rocky soil up here, I really wore those down pretty quickly. I mean, we only put in about 150 post holes so far and I've got hundreds more to do. It wore down pretty quickly. So it cost me, it cost me a lot. And there's a video on that I just created on replacing that auger there and the mistakes I made. Hopefully you don't make the same mistake. Watch that video, go back and watch that video. Link above, link down in the description below. Um, but that's what I was just doing. And now we are back with the new auger, brand new i had to replace the whole the whole shaft there not the whole mechanism but the just the shaft replaced all that and we're ready to go i got the first hole back there dug down a little deeper i'm going to go back and i'm going to hit all the rest of these holes and get them a few inches deeper because um, i just want to go a little bit deeper on there they're about 24 inches deep right now my frost line is about 18. i want to go closer to 30 to 36 inches if i can it's pretty rocky down here um, just so I have more stability with these concrete piers that the sawmill is going to sit on. So that's what I'm going to do now. We're going to watch that in time lapse right now. All right, well, that was a lot better with that new shaft with the new teeth and the uh, tip on that thing. Uh, I made quick work of all this. It went a lot easier. Um, it's really, really super dry here. And so it wasn't pulling the dirt out like it should. So I had to use the, obviously the, um, you know, post hole digger to, to pull out all the, the excess dirt that it was, you know, it was grinding up those rocks really well. Um, you can see down on the ground here, all of these rocks that was from before and occasionally there's some big ones that it would break up and spit out. Um, but for the most part, it was just grinding those rocks up into this fine dust that I had to pull out of the hole. But I got everything down to uh, around 30, 32 inches deep. Um, I got try to get deeper on the down slope. Um, so that way, because it's on the down slope, I want it just a little bit deeper. And then I also tried to um, put right here in the front, which is the where the head unit will be. So the head of the sawmill, where most of the weight and all the activity is going to be primarily here within the first like eight to, you know, 10 feet or so. Um, and then at the end, that's where, you know, the tail of the, the long part, I'm not as concerned down there. So we got the holes dug and next it's uh, pouring concrete. Well, first, actually, I've got to get all of these uh, set right, uh, gravel on the bottom and cut to height that I need. So uh, we'll get moving on that next. Well, that's a wrap on the first video of this three-part video series. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hit that like button if you did. Hopefully you're subscribed and have notifications turned on so you can be alerted to when we publish more videos. So keep a lookout for the next video, which is pouring concrete and setting some brackets. So until next time, keep living the dream.